Hello and welcome back to Barossa Valley Crafts. Today I'm going to do some Christmas cards using the Sweet Poppy stencils. So we're going to be using the Bauble stencil, the Globe stencil and the Poinsettia Bauble stencil. This is a new release just recently done. So I'll show you how I've done these. I mean we might have a little bit of variation in the way that they're stamped but they'll be roughly the same. So we'll start off with this one. So what you're going to need is a piece of card that's going to be big enough for the um, stencil to go over. So we'll just pop that down there. And then using tape, I'm going to pop this into place so it doesn't move while we're blending the inks on it. Now, the Sweet Poppy stencils, these particular ones that I'm using anyway, they're metal and they've got a little, uh, quite a lot of fine detail on them. So when you're using these and you're blending the inks over them, don't use a foam uh, blending tool because the foam will rip on all these little bits and pieces and it will damage them and you don't want to do that. So what I use is just... I guess they call them makeup brushes, but they're also a blending tool as well. So for this particular one, we're going to be using uh, Distress Oxide Iced Spruce. And I'll just get the lid off. So I've just got a scrap of paper. So popping a bit of ink onto your brush, just get the excess off. You don't want to put it on and have a big blob of dark ink and then just very lightly go over the stencil you can always come back and make the color darker if you need to but if you put it on too heavy to start with you cannot remove it so just very lightly we'll go over the whole stencil and if you want a bit darker you can just if you put a bit more pressure on it you'll get the darker colour as well. So if you want shading, depends on how heavy you press, whether you want it dark or light. I'll just keep on going around. These really are beautiful. Oh dear, it's moved. Oh no, that's okay. That's all right. So I'm just pop that out of the way. And then with this particular one, I'm going to stamp it using stamps from the, uh, now what are these called? Stamp Scape. And you can get a variety of them. They have beautiful scenery on their stamps. And that's what we're going to be using for this particular one. So we'll just pop this here. And for this one, we're going to be using this. So I'm going to pop that in place. And pick it up. Now for the stamping, I'm using Nocturne Versafine Clear. I like my Versafine Clear inks for um, stamping with. So we'll ink that up and then stamp it down. Remember when you're stamping, allow time for the card to soak in the ink. Don't just pop it and lift it straight away. Oh, isn't that a beautiful stamp? I love these stamps. You can create some beautiful pictures with them. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm going to add a little boat on here as well. So roughly work out where we want it about there. And then we'll just ink that one up. Now this particular stamp, if I was to stamp it as it is, it's very square. So what I'm going to do is remove a little bit of ink from the 
base of the stamp to give it a more rounded effect rather than a sharp cornered stamp. There we go. So now we've got the little boat in the scene. And that's the beauty of these stamps is you build up a scene with these stamps. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to blend some of the same colour, so the ice spruce again, just very lightly around the edge of the card. So when you get off the excess ink, I'm only going to go just on the edge. Sorry if you can hear that noise next door. They tend to have very loud music occasionally. Okay, I'll just pop that onto there. Alrighty. So now I'm going to attach that to the card. Now, I'm not giving measurements only because if you don't necessarily need to use the same stencils that I'm using. So you would just cut your cardstock to suit the, the size of the stencils that you are using. And a lot of people find some of them are too big to post, which makes posting very expensive as well. But if you're giving them out in person, then it doesn't really matter about the size too much. So I'm just using a black mat with these ones. And then we'll pop this one on. So I'm using a, a smooth white uh, cardstock for the stamping and the blending. You can use a textured card if you want a textured look. Okay. Now, I'm going to now put that aside just to make sure the ink's dry before I do any more decorating to it. So we'll come back to that one in a moment. So now we'll go on to the snow glow. So with this one, I've actually used two colours when I was doing the blending. So I'll just get the card. And with these stencils, you don't have to use them that way. If you wanted to, you could turn it over and use it the opposite way. Which We'll do it the opposite way, just to show you how they look done in opposite directions. I'll just put the card... So I probably did the wrong thing cutting the card before doing the uh, blending because I would have normally done the blending and then trimmed the card up. But I just thought I'd save a bit of time and I think in hindsight it was probably the wrong thing to do. Okay. I'll just use the same tape. It's good that it's reusable. Okay, now to start off with, so I'm going to be using, um, we'll start off with the ice spruce again. So I'm just going to very lightly do the ice spruce just around the very edges of the stencil. And this one, you've got a lot of fine detail with the... Um, snowflakes on here so be really careful around those that you don't hook them and that's why you don't really want to be using a foam blending brush because it will catch and damage the stencil okay, so it's just lightly done with that one and then I'm going to come in with Wild Honey, just to give it another colour. 
Again, you don't have to use the colours I'm using. You can use any colours you like. So just going around on the inside of the previous one. I'm not going to do too much in the centre because I want that left fairly brightish. Just blend that over there. Okay. And now for the reveal. This is the part I like, seeing how it all looks. I'm hoping it looks okay. <laughs> okay. Lift that off. Ah, oh, there we go. That looks all right. So with um, so with these stencils, because of all this fine detail on them, when it comes to cleaning them, just do it under running water. Don't use a cloth or anything because, again, you can damage all the fine work. So if you just run water over them, and I actually use my fingers when I'm cleaning it under running water, and then just pat them dry or let them air dry. Okay, so now I'll just get this out of the way. And bring in the stamping platform. Okay. So with this one, I'm going to use the Stampscapes again for the seam. So it's going to be the same as the other one. So this one's a reflection. So you've got to make sure you get them the right way up. Just pop it into place. And again, I'm going to be Inking up with Versafine Clear Nocturne. And press. Here we go. Missed a little patch. It's the beauty of the stamp press. I can fix that up. There we go. Twist it again. I've got a sore shoulder, so I can't put too much weight behind my pressing at the moment. But that's fine. So we'll just pop that one out of the way. And again, we'll just go around. The edges very lightly you don't have to do this I think it just finishes them off a little bit more and it uh, brings it in brings the whoops brings the eye into the center And a bit at the top. See, I probably could have cut this card a bit bigger if I wanted to. And I'll just do a little bit of the wild honey around the very edge as well. I don't normally use the two colours, but it actually looks quite effective doing it with couple of blended colours, something different. There we go, that's enough. And again, I will attach that to the base card. So I'm just using Turbo Tacky Glue to stick the cards together. This one hasn't got a lot of wriggle space, so I need to get it on pretty quickly before it dries too much. Okay, 
Okay. And I'll put this one on. Now, if you wanted to, you could put foam tape on the back and have it raised if you wanted it with a bit more dimension. But given I'm going to be posting these, I don't want them too thick in the letter in the mail. And I'll just pop that one on there. Okay, so again, we're just going to pop that aside and let it dry before we do any more to it. And I've got a third one here now. So, but this one, just to save a little bit of time, I've already done the blending of the ink on this one. And for this one, I have used Versafine Clear Green Oasis. So it's just done the same as the others, just blending the inks around. And for this one, I'm going to be using Lavinia Stamps, Fir Tree and the Reindeer. So we'll pop. Actually, if I use these to work out where I want them. I guess that'll fit on there nicely. So we'll just pop the tree there. And Versafine Clear Nocturne again. You don't have to do them in black. I just like the silhouette against them. I think it looks nice. It's a nice little tree too. I like that one. And the deer. Move him about there. I might even see he's coming out of the bauble a bit, but that's okay. him up. Make sure you put enough ink on the stamp so a lot of people don't really ink it enough and there's not enough ink to give a really good impression and it means you've got to keep going back over it. side. Now I've already put the base card and the matte card together so now we'll just put this one on. Again you could use foam tape if you wanted to give it some dimension. Try and get as much of the border as equal as you can around it where possible. Okay, so with this one, we might, using the green again, we'll ground the tree and the deer, I'll just get off the worst of the green, and then we'll just have the tree and the reindeer standing on a bit of ground. So it doesn't look like they're floating. There we go. And let's put another one up here. We'll make a little bit of a hill in the background as well. We'll just do that a little bit fainter. There we go. So it looks like it's got a bit of a hill going up in the background. Okay, so now... We'll go to a little bit of decorating. So we'll go back to the first one. So on this one, I'm going to, I've got a, this is a zig glue pen. So I'll just pump it a bit to get some glue. And I'm just going to pop some little dots in where the snowflakes are. 
in the center of them. And then I'm going to add some glitter to that. off the excess so there we go you can see I've got some sparkly dots in there and then to that one I'm also going to add just pop this away so I'm just getting a blue pencil and grab it out. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue where the water is. So these are just a Derwent colouring pencil. I think they're actually watercolour ones, so if you wanted to, you could do them with watercolour and add the water to them. And I'm going to use a really light brown, just add a little bit of colour to the rocks. Doesn't have to be too perfect. Here we go. Oh, some glitter down there still I'll get that off a bit later so that's that one done now we'll go to this other one and this time I've got a quickie glue pen just make sure we've got the glue flowing and this time I'll just Do it with that. I think the other one tends to give a bigger dot, whereas this one's a bit finer. Uh, oh, this one up here. So with this one, I'm going to use the Lavinia glitter, and this one's called Holographic. But where the glue is so you want if you wanted to you could do more glitter all around and make like snowdrops if you wanted snowdrops I think I have made these cards before and I've used other Lavinia stamps in them and again I'll use some blue for the water put a bit of brown on the building just to give it a little bit of color in fact we could also if we get a bit of yellow a bit of yellow in the windows for light and that can also be reflecting in the water the, from the light there we go if you wanted to you could add your merry christmas sentiment or you can leave it as it is and the last one so what should we do with that one um i reckon i get Got some red stickles here. So if I put some red, if I can get it to come out. So on the flowery bits on the berries, I'll just make red glitter dots. I find it's best to um, put the card together before you do these because that way it can be left to sit there to dry. You don't want to be trying to put the card together 
while these are still wet. So at least now I can just set them aside. And while I'm doing this, um, if you'd like to join us on my Facebook page, Card Making for Beginners and Beyond, and you can share your craft work there. And we're not limited to brands, so you can use any brands you like. And you're not limited to just doing tutorials that I've done here either. You can, anything that you like, you can um, post in there that's craft related. It doesn't have to be cards. It can be scrapbooking, quilting, crafts in general. There we go. And then I think we might add a little bit of glitter where the hills are as well. And the grounding. Just do this colour here. So this one's called Vintage Shimmer. It's a Lavinia glitter. Just brush off the excess. And that's done. I'll just pop this away. So that's it. So it's three different ways to use three different stencils. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. And if you have, please do give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when there's more tutorials done. And come and join us in the um, Card Making for Beginners and Beyond Facebook group if you like. Thank you for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you. Bye.